This is the Kitchen Cube. It supposedly replaces all of your measuring devices in one gadget. But does it really work? Let's find out in today's video. Let's first up take a look at the unboxing and then get started. All right, here we are, the Kitchen Cube all-in-one measuring device. I paid 20 bucks for this direct from the official website. It's also on Amazon, as an Amazon's choice. The claims are that it has 19 common measurements for US and metric, reduces clutter and saves space, good for dorms, RVs, and camping, made from food grade material, great gift idea. They say it's good for powders, liquids, grains, and more, dishwasher and microwave safe. But it is wedged in there. I'm not sure if I expected instructions, but there are none in case you're wondering. Let's see all the measurements we got here. This is a one cup here. We've got half a cup, quarter cup, one third cup. Here we have two tablespoons, one tablespoon, half a tablespoon, one teaspoon, half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They said 19. Where's the, I got 10. So the people on Amazon who like this said they love the idea of not washing a bunch of utensils. And they also said it's pretty easy to clean. People who didn't really like it said it's not very handy. Some said if you have a recipe with multiple measurements, you're gonna have to keep washing this over and over again. Some said it's kind of expensive for just a piece of plastic. Let's find out for ourselves if it actually works. Now I did figure out what they got the number 19 from. They only have 10 cutouts, but nine of them are doubled because they have US and metric on there. So nine double is 18 plus one is 19 for the one cup. They say 19 measurements, but really it's, it's only 10 cutouts. I did find a few reviews of this out there. I found actually an interesting one on HSN. HSN actually had someone making pancakes with this, so I might try to duplicate what he did. But before I do that, let me see how accurate this one cup measurement is. I've got one cup of water here measured out Carefully, I'm gonna pour it in there and see how high it goes. They don't really have a fill line, so I, I guess it's all the way to the top. Let's see. So I'm just gonna pour this in there and see how high it goes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, it's all the way to the top. It's almost coming over the sides, it's so full. Wow. Well, it is one cup. There's just not a lot of room left over at the top, but it does hold one cup, so that's, that's a good thing. As I was saying before, I think the first thing I wanna do is actually I wanna duplicate what the, they did on HSN. He made some pancakes, measured everything out with the, his kitchen cube. What was interesting though, is he said you only need one cube to replace all your devices, but he used two cubes when he's measuring out. He had a white one for the flour and a red one for everything else. I wonder why he did that but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna use one for everything. The other thing I noticed is that everything he was putting in the kitchen cube seemed to be from containers that were kind of optimized for something like this. Like he had a nice small sugar container that he poured into. What if you wanna put a small amount of sugar in something like this, but you've got a giant container like this? Fortunately, I have a cup inside there, but what if I didn't? So what I wanted to do is pull everything out of my cabinets. These are not optimized for the kitchen cube. I'm just gonna pull them out as is and see how they measure out. So let's get started right now making this pancake recipe that he did and see how accurate these measurements really are. First up, one cup of flour. Now my flour container has a small cup in there. It's not one cup, because there really would be no way to, I mean, if it, I, I couldn't even put this in there to dig it out if I wanted to. I really can't scrape it out without, I have to use something. So I'll use this. I think this is a, this is a, a quarter of a cup. I should point out also the HSN guy did not show himself measuring the flour. I would happen to be conveniently pre-measured before they started filming. I'm suspicious of that. I mean, I think it would have been easier just pulling out a, a cup like this and, and getting it out that way, but right, that's pretty close to one cup. Close enough. Now we need two tablespoons of sugar. Now I got sugar in a big container like this, um, I, but I can use the cup that I have in there to kind of help me measure it out a little better. So I have to look on here for two tablespoons, two tablespoons. I think that's uh, two tablespoons. All right, two teaspoons of baking powder. Uh, so I got fine, two teaspoons. So I can do one teaspoon right there. And how am I gonna measure that out? Now, if I was just using my normal measuring spoons, I would just pull this out and, and call it good. But now I have to actually waste one to put it in there. It's not, it's, it's not real intuitive. One teaspoon. It's kind of ridiculous I have to use the, the measuring spoon to put it in the measuring cube. 
but I will not be deterred. I'm going to make this happen. Half a teaspoon of salt, which uh, is going to be this one right here. Now this should be easy with this particular spout here. All right, one cup of milk. I'm going to substitute some oat milk from this one because I need to get rid of my oat milk. I don't want to go all the way to the top because it's going to it's probably going to spill. All right, so one teaspoon. One tablespoon, um, look at this, it's spilling out of here. What's this? I'm kind of making a mess here. I don't know if I would have made this much of a mess with regular measuring spoons, but we're gonna continue on. Teaspoon of vegetable oil. This could be kind of, uh, kind of dicey here. Oh, it was close, but it didn't overflow. My, my cube is getting kind of nasty looking. It's, kind of, it's got flour on it, it's got oil all over it. It's just, it's not looking so good. Now measuring spoons wouldn't look good either, but this is all in one. I guess it's, maybe it's good to have the mess all in one place. I don't know. All right, we've got a little bit of butter here. This wasn't measured out. It was just kind of an arbitrary amount, really. That's what he did. Now, interesting, they say that you can use the center of this. I just got oil on my hands from the other side. But they say you can use this line here to crack eggs with. So let me try that. But the egg crack did work. Uh, I'm just going to stir this up. I'm going to make these pancakes and see how the measurements all seem. All right, I'm going to stir this for a minute or two, and then I'm going to head to the kitchen and see how they do. All right, well, the pancakes seem to turn out okay, at least visually. I mean, they look fine to me. Let me take a little taste of this. I would say they're standard pancakes, so I mean, the measurement wise, it worked pretty well. I guess I'll clean it off next, try a few more tests, and then wrap this thing up. So, all the cutouts are angled, so suppose if you put it flat side up, there would be no water collection in the dishwasher. I'm gonna try that out because this looks uh, kind of nasty right now, so let's see how it does in the dishwasher. I just have a few more odds and ends to go over before I wrap this thing up. I will say it came out of the wash and looks nicely. In fact, I've actually washed it twice. As you can see, no worse for wear. It looks just like when I first opened it up. I will say that, as they said, putting the flat side up, these cutouts did not collect water in that angle. They would if you put it the other way. So it actually looks uh, quite nice coming out of the wash. I want to say they actually said that this is a space saving device. I'm not so sure about that claim. Here's the measuring cups and spoons that I usually use, and it's about the same size. In fact, it has a lower profile. I'm not sure it saves space as far as storage goes. One argument for this is that you can only have to wash one item instead of a bunch of them, which that's kind of a, a true statement. There might be instances where you get one or two of these uh, cutouts dirty and you just put the whole thing in the wash and then you're done. On the other hand, if it starts getting kind of nasty, you might be done with it before you're even done measuring. Unlike your spoons, which you might have, have a bunch of other choices that haven't gotten dirty yet. So it's gonna be situational whether dirtying one device is better or not. But there are situations where it works great. Last night I made some popcorn in one of the popcorn makers I reviewed a few months ago. I poured the oil in there, I poured the popcorn, and it actually worked perfectly fine. I put it in the dishwasher, it came out great. In other situations, not so great, especially when you're trying to get a small amount of powder out of a small container. In that case, you almost always have to use another utensil, which defeats the purpose of it being an all-in-one device. For example, say you want some, some cocoa here. And I only want a small amount, like a quarter of a teaspoon. What am I going to do? I can't, it doesn't, it doesn't fit in there. A quarter of a teaspoon with this spoon would be quite easy, actually. So I think the only way to get it in here is to dirty something else. It does seem like it's better for measuring liquids and measuring dry items. That's because most liquids have a pour spout already, so it doesn't really matter how big the container is. Here's a large container, and I can, I can fill up this quarter of a teaspoon pretty, pretty nicely, except for a couple of drips. So it's really going to boil down to how you use it and what you use it for, whether you like it or not. I know it has a lot of good reviews on Amazon, but to me, I'm kind of on the fence about it. But if you've used the Kitchen Cube, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.